How am I doing that right now? Huh? Uh huh? Oh, it's magic. Well, you know, not really. We're going to go into how I'm doing this right now. Today, tracking. I'll show you an example of one of my client works that I did that utilizes the same technique right here. Tracking. Ooh. What's up guys? If you're new here, my name is Paul. I run a channel here that does videos on inspiring other creators that your future is whatever you make it. And I do this through vlogs, tutorials like today, and gear reviews, which I love gear reviews. My wife would tell you and agree that it's a, it's a weakness of mine. We're gonna be going over tutorials today and what better for Final Cut now. If you want more stuff like this in the future and you like gear like I do and you wanna see other stuff, man, you gotta subscribe to this channel and hit that bell notification to be notified when I post new videos weekly, or at least most of the time. So one of the things I've kind of like been struggling with with Final Cut and sometimes that you guys might experience this too is how do people do all these sweet tracking? I mean. Adobe's got it built in, but man, Final Cut hasn't jumped on the like, bandwagon yet. But there's a way around it, and it's Pixel Film Studio. You spend a few bucks, or 20, or whatever it cost me, I don't know, I can't remember, I got it on sale. Well, you buy this plugin, and it allows you to track, which is wonderful. And you can see that through the example, and I'll show you an example from work. And I'm going to dig into this and just show you how I did this, how it can save you some time. But let's talk about saving time. I'm blabbering way too much. Let's get into this tutorial and I'll show you an example on how we can knock this out together. All right, so here we got Final Cut Pro, and this is my uh, you know little session that I had from my previous client work. I did a Christmas video, and as you can tell, the beginning of it kind of starts off, fades into the picture, and qu quickly zooms out and has this like little book thing. Now, if any of you are iMovie fans, then you might recognize this. Yes, this is like one of the iMovie templates that you can have kind of like a photo book or whatever, but um, this just worked out well. It, you can't really tell that it's from iMovie unless you were familiar with iMovie or unless I told you just like now it's from iMovie. And I knew that was in iMovie, so I just took it. Now, the only thing you can't do with iMovie is change the text. So they have a, a, a basic te text that you in iMovie that you just cannot change. And I was like, ah, that's fine. I'll just keyframe the text points. And then I was like realizing, wait, this is a lot more work. Why don't I just use my Pixel Film Studio Tracker 2.1 and it worked out fantastic. There is no glitches. The hard part about keyframing text is it just, it could jump around and it just looks unnatural where this looks like it, the text just stayed in the exact same place the entire time like it was just, you know, text added to that, that book. It was actually on a picture book. And it, can tell that the tracking did a fantastic job. What I'm going to do here is add another tracking point and recreate this from scratch so you can see how I do this. Pixel Film Studios makes some awesome plugins. No, this video is not sponsored by Pixel Film Studios. Hey, if Pixel Film Studios sees this and you want to sponsor more videos, I'd be happy to, to do your stuff because it's amazing. But this is my favorite plugin that they make currently that I've used. This is uh, the, the Tracker 2.1. I think if anybody has Final Cut, they should strongly consider getting this because Final Cut does not have any built-in tracking at this point. I would love to see Apple add this in in a future update, but we're still waiting on that. Until then, let's use Pixel Film Studio. It does a pretty good job. So if I was gonna do that, I would do text because you know you have three options, like a drop zone, like you're gonna drop a picture or an image, drop zone and text, 
And then in our case today, I already have the whole video laid out. Uh, I just want to drop some text on there to make it look like it's legit. So I'll drag this over to the spot you want to start at. And because I'm cheating and I have already found the spot, I'll just go ahead and see the ending of this. I really could have ended this like right here. So we'll just go ahead and end, end this. Even really tool to chop that bad boy off. All right. I'm just gonna hide this so you can't see the original and we'll see if we can recreate that. Now, what do we do? All right, so you click on this and you'll see this Pixel Film Studio, boom, boom, boom. I don't know why this, oh, here we go, yep, tracker. So it's adding track tracker 2.0 text. You would replace it with whatever text you want. Let's see if I have it twice, so it's, there we go. So I pasted it in, I cheated, I pasted in the text that I already knew I wanted. But let's just go ahead and get these keyframes in before we go too crazy. So what we're going to do is make sure you're selected that box and we're going to go to track editor. And we're going to open that up. And what you're going to see is this little separate window that pops up like this. And these are going to be with the, the, the spot where it does all the keyframing down here. But you know, so you have a lot of options. You can choose like a square or like a circle. Yeah, so you, when you click on it, you can do a circle, or you can do a square. I guess it really doesn't matter for this um, spot, but uh, I guess, you know, the other one I did a square, but we can do a circle for this one, I guess. So what I did is you want to find the, sp the point in the video that there is the most contrast. For this particular video, what I did is I got Santa Claus's uh, beard. So let me just put a circle around Santa Claus's face. And I want to select, so this spot right here is where it's really gonna focus on the tracking. So I'm gonna, I don't know, let's do it this way. So Santa Claus's beard is very white, got the most contrast, whatever. So we're going to go ahead and track this point. You know, you want to make the, tr the tracker do the, the all the work easily, so you want to find a spot that is going to be able to track it pretty easily. I feel like the beard, because of the white, is probably one of our best. You probably could also track, like, her earring right here if you wanted to, and just kind of, like, zoom down on this and track the earring itself because, uh, you know, uh, pretty white contrasty but for this I'm gonna try to re replicate what I did and I, I did the I did Santa Claus's face with the beard so we'll go ahead and do that um, and one of the things you also have to consider is uh, once you have your point is do you want the position only tracked which is over here do you want it position and scale which is you know not just tracking the position of it but also like how big, or which we definitely want that because the picture is zooming in and out. And then you also have, uh, or position and rotation. Do you only want to track where it's positioning and kind of whether it's rotating at all? But for this one, I'm gonna do all the above because the, because the video start, like zooms in and out and also rotates, I want to do position, scale, and rotation. And I want to keep that, sit uh, solid so what we're gonna do for this one is we got our point mr. Santa Claus's beard we got that selected uh, track quality I always like to do at 100% just because it does take longer the you know the, if the the less quality you select it'll do it faster but I found it to be more accurate when you just put it hundred percent and wait I'd rather wait and get it right the first time than it not do something correctly or me have to go back and change a few keyframes so boom um, and then the rest of it you know I kind of just leave it where it is and so we're gonna go ahead and press this play button right here and you know make sure this bar is over here at the start of it and we're gonna suddenly let it go and as you can see it is keyframing Mr. Santa Claus's face and using that for our tracking points for the text and this way it knows you know how 
big or, or what scaling is changing during uh, the video. So we'll let this play through and I'll uh, come back at you once this finishes. All right, and we are back, yeah. So it did take, I don't know, maybe a minute or something, a minute and a half maybe. It wasn't that long. I'll put the time it took on the screen. But as you can see, it finished with no errors. Now, if it did have any errors, then this the, the pop-up would happen and say like you know there were errors it lost tracking point and it would you know you'd look down on the screen and be able to see where the missing uh, keyframes these are all these white things are just tons and tons and tons of keyframes and y you can see how it would save you some serious time uh, it would stink to have to put all those keyframes in yourself so this uh, marked all the keyframes and it didn't air out which means it, sh it should have no problems doing this so we're going to go ahead and click export data if you had errors you could essentially go back and click on certain keyframes and delete them and start over the whole process again but like I said if you choose a nice contrasty point that is clear like a, a distinct like solid color of you know, like white or what you have it and you should have no problems with tracking. Uh, this thing is very good. Anyway, so we're gonna export that data and it will drop all that information into the tracker and we can go back, add our text, change the curve of the text, and then you'll see that's how I created that little tracking point and you can do this for pretty much anything and so you might be thinking to yourself all right where in the world is the text as you can see you're like wait there's the tracking point where is the text you have to see, make sure there you go the text is been turned on so let's just select all this text paste it I already pasted the other one and I cheated so I don't have to don't have to recreate all the uh, font look of the old one. And the cool thing about this is, like, say you're adding, you can add motion blur to this if you wanted to. There's just so many different things you can do within this tracker. And as you can see, it's tracking great, but I've now got to change where this text is. So we can take this, this is how you can scale it up and down, but I'm gonna actually change the position of this text. Alright, so we're gonna move this. Let's kind of look at where the photo book is. Alright, so there we go. So that is kind of where it is, but we obviously need to angle this a bit. So we are going to, and so you can move the Y and the X just to make it look like it's more for this, we're gonna kinda go to the Z axis here and kinda get it to where I want it to be. And for more accurate, like it's hard to do this with the mouse. So we're gonna go, I don't know, two, no, five, no, that's too much. Four, no, that's still not enough. Three, still not enough, so maybe 2.5. 2.5 looks pretty close. Let's go with, uh, I don't know, still looks not quite centered, so let's go with 2.4. Right, let's try, let's see what that looks like. See, that text just stays perfectly there. See, there you guys go. It's really just that easy in how you can use Pixel Films Tracker in your videos just to spice them up just a little bit. It saves me a ton of time. If I had to do that, that could have taken easily an hour of my time just to track out that one little title, putting a keyframe and making it look seamless like the text isn't jumping all over the page. That's the hardest part you have with stuff like that, especially with very smooth movements like that like that video had. So awesome, awesome tool. And if you want it, there'll be links down in the description below. 
you can check it out for yourself see if it's something that you want to pick up but like I said you can't really go wrong with that tracker I think everybody needs a tracker if you have Final Cut since it does not built in and this has been the best one I could find I hope you guys are having a nice 2020 and like I said subscribe if you're new here and you want to see more content like this I plan to do a lot more Final Cut Pro tutorials in the future so click that subscribe and bell notification so you'll be notified do all the YouTube things and I will see you in the future